You're up for a treat, guys. <laughs> Nabil, thank you so much. He flew today for this, and he flew all the way from... From Des Moines, Iowa. Come on, that far. <laughs> awesome. So would you please start sharing the, um, your story and how you came to one of our conferences in 2012, I believe, and what were you struggling with? Oh, it was a terrible situation. I went through a very difficult time and uh, uh, I was about to die. You know, but God made it and uh, he gave me a life again. He's re he restored my life. I, mean, I was basically diagnosed with uh, chronic leukemia. If everybody experienced about the cancer, leukemia is the one of the bad disease, you know. Uh, I was had the... Uh, interior bleeding. Uh, when I uh, go to bathroom, basically, I will just basically see the blood. If I want to urine, just basically blood. If I want to spit out, the blood will come out. If, um, uh, if I put my finger in my ear, I will see the blood. And my right ear, my right eye also become blurry because of the blood. Basically, everything was about the blood. Imagine if somebody telling you that, are you gonna tell that somebody is really lying or that person is already dead? How are you gonna expect that person? How is gonna live among with you? How are you gonna welcome this person to be with you? But something within me, God, uh, he was with me. And uh, he's only one person I trust him the last moment that if I put my whole trust in him, I will probably will make it. And uh, that's what happened. And uh, would you please share also, how many years did you struggle with leukemia and what were the, um, your ways to find any solutions at that time? It was difficult. It was difficult. It was, um, uh, be before I go to doctor, it was around six or seven years. And uh, when I go to doctor, it was in 2010, and the doctor already said, tell me, you know, it was so hard, and you are in the second stage. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to, do, what to do with that, and it was so hard for me. So how did that disease affect your daily life? It was terrible. It affected me. It made me lazy. It made me sleepy. It made me hitching. I can't, I can't uh, sit down without hitching, without scratching myself. Uh, if I go bathroom, I have to run away from water because it, when the water touched my skin, I have to sc uh, scratch my skin, and it was so bad. Uh, also, I call my family back home in Sudan. I'm, I'm from Sudan, by the way. Uh, I call my family back home in Sudan. My, my older brother, he was pastor. He is, he's still a pastor up to now. And I tell him what happened to me, and he, give, he, just, he lost the hope, and he told me, just bring the kids back home because he knows that I'm not going to make it. What happened to you when you came to the conference? How did the Lord touch you and how did you receive your healing? It was funny. I was sitting all the way in the back and then, uh, you know, they give us the paper, like by number. If you get that number, you have to go through the line so they can pray for you. And I don't have a paper, I don't have a number. I tried to copy some, to copy some number, I can't make it because the, this, the, the number that they do it with the, with the marker is different than the pen I have it. And I tried to get something so it can become similar, but I couldn't make it. But, you know, indeed, God answered me. He knew that's what I'm looking for. During the mass prayer, the uh, wise man here, he came very close, and I was looking to him, and I was backing up, backing up, backing up, and he's still coming. You know, without, with some reason, I fall down, I, my, I get myself down, and I begin to vomiting some white substance, and I don't know what the heck was that. But, you know, and I feel like somebody just took off from me. It looked like we've been two people, and somebody just separated from me and just left me alone. And then when a wise man touched me, you know, I feel like heavy. And then when he left, things go with him. And I don't know where exactly, I don't know how to describe it, that one, but things left me immediately. And I feel light. When I wake up, I kind of like I'm trying to laughing at that people in the floor, but I find myself I already was with them in the floor. Come on, let's give God the glory for his delivering power. You guys, this is the healing of cancer. 
something that doctors say it's incurable. But for our God, there is nothing that's incurable. He can cure any disease any sickness, any infirmity, our God is all powerful. And this is the living proof, come on. Nabil, would you please uh, uh, tell us, after that deliverance took place, how did you find out that you were completely cancer free? And did you go back to the doctor to prove that? Yeah, doctor was my, was, was my the first witness because he wrote it at the demon register and uh, he tell what happened. He told me, he called me the miracle boy. When I went back to him, the first they do normally when I go to doctor, they draw that blood from me. And then when they took the blood and they give me like uh, two days and they called me back to the office. When I went, he told me what happened, tell us exactly. I said, nothing happened, I just went to conference. You know? And, uh, that's what I get, I, I, I just came back with this, and uh, what happened? I feel scary, actually. But he told me, you know, your blood look clean. And, uh, you know, something, you know. Come on, let's give God the glory. <laughs> Who doesn't want to hear proof from a doctor saying, you have nothing to worry about, your blood looks clean. Amen. Only God can do that. And so how are you doing right now? How many years has it been and how do you feel? Oh, I feel very good and I'm happy and I'm not going to stop my happiness until the end of the, my day in life. Because this thing is already gone. And uh, I am a witness. I'm a witness now and I'm going to be a witness the end of the world. Because he he's the one in charge of that he cleaned all my blood and now no more i can't urine no more blood i can hear very very good i can see now i drive from the airport to here and i can see very well and uh, also another thing has come after this after when i get released from the evil i began to see the see the blessing every second i see blessing to blessing blessing to blessing and uh, it's, it's it's real it's real it's real. What are the blessings that you see in your life right now? First, we got the extra baby. That's one. <laughs> so, and I earned to have that. And then the second thing is, I went back to school. I graduated from community college, associate degree with the business information system. And then now, I went to Grandview University. I'm going to graduate next Monday by uh, April 26th. God is amazing. That is so awesome. Nabil, would you please uh, share a word of advice to people who find themselves in a situation that maybe doctors tell them there is no way out. This is incurable. You're going to die. Would you, what would you uh, tell them? I want to tell you and I want to tell everybody that God given us one minute or one second is free gift from the heaven to us. It's free gift. It's free of charge. You can use it to worship Him, or you can use it to waste it. It's only two things, two ways. You can use it to worship Him, or you can use it to waste it with the evil. And that gift, God will ask you at the end of the time when He came back. He will tell you, I give you the free life. How do you deal with it? Where do you, where, where, where you been? How you waste this whole life? Imagine how old are you now? How, where you been and where are you going? He promised you, what is your promise to him? If you, if you get this one, you will stop with him and don't lose that because the time you will be asking. Thank you so much, Nabil. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you.